Okay, geometry, here's your notes for 3.5, day two. Uh, playing off of what we learned on day one with slopes, point slopes, point slope form. Here's a reintroduction to the equation of a line in point slope form. It's the formula that we use. Recopy it if you need to. Go ahead and pause the video and get this written down unless, of course, you have a handout of your notes. Write an equation of the line passing through the point, negative 1, 1. So here's our x1, y1 that is parallel to the line of the equation. And we talked about parallel, and parallel lines have the same exact slope. Two lines that are parallel must have the exact same slope. They'd go have the same rise, same run, to keep them on the same angle up there. So we have slope of 2. We can't use the b or the y-intercept because then we'd end up making the exact same line. All we need is to know that the two slopes are parallel. How do we find where that line goes? Going through that same point. So the rest of this will look pretty familiar and a repeat of doing the previous notes. x minus, make sure you don't lose that negative 1. Clean this up. y minus 1 equals distribute. And you can make that a plus. 2x plus 2. It's always a two-step process, distribute and then add. Then we'll add one to both sides, add it over here to the y-intercept, and your final equation is y equals 2x plus 3. You could check your answers. Number one, make sure they have the same slopes. Number two, plug in your x, negative 1, 2 times negative 1 plus 3. Make sure it comes out to a positive 1, which is what your y is. I may have cruised through that way too fast, then pause me. Slow me down, just like you would in real class. You would say, hey, whoa, 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 stop, slow down. There's one problem with parallel. Uh, perpendicular. We talked about perpendicular slopes, that they have the exact opposite reciprocal. If this slope is positive, this slope is negative. If this slope went up 2 over 3, this slope went down 3 over 2. Opposite reciprocal slopes to make them perpendicular. Unless, of course, they're vertical and horizontal, then you'd have a zero slope and an undefined slope. But what I'm going to do from there, then, is the same thing, but instead of using this slope, we don't need the intercept. Instead of using the exact same slope, when we have perpendicular, you need to use the opposite reciprocal slope. So instead of a negative, it's a positive. Instead of two, it's one half. And then the rest of this is going to be a repeat of the point slope form. y minus 3 equals 1 half times x minus 2. Distribute and add. You get y minus 3 equals 1 half x minus 1. Add 3 to both sides, and your final answer becomes y equals 1 half x plus 2. I guess I didn't show my add 3 to both sides. Double check your answer, plug in the x, half of 2 plus 2 ends up being 3, which is your y. Please make sure that you flip your slope before you do the work. By far the most common mistake is that students do this equation with a negative 2, and then when they're done, they say, oh, it's perpendicular, make it the opposite reciprocal. That's not okay. You have to turn it into the opposite reciprocal immediately before finding the equation of the line. So there's one parallel, one perpendicular. Uh, this one is still parallel. You could take the time to write down the whole equation or you could just write the point, the word parallel, and the equation of the line. The problem is this line is not in slope-intercept form. So we can't look at that and be like, oh, our slope is negative 6 because it's the coefficient of the x. No, it's not. We can't use negative 6 we're going to have to take this equation of the line and rearrange it into y equals mx plus b. Our b is fine. Our y-intercept, negative 10, is over there. Our negative 6 is not. We have to add 6x over to this side. Get rid of that. You're left with 2y equals... And of course, these are not like terms. Don't try to take negative 10 and add 6x to it. And because of the order of slope-intercept form, we're going to want to write that 6x first 
and finish with the negative 10 so that it matches up with y equals mx plus b. And we're close here, but we're not done yet because that y isn't isolated. You need to divide by 2. And when you divide by 2, you divide by it once, twice, three times dividing by 2. When you divide by 2, every term has to be divided by 2. So we're left with y equals 3x minus 5. And it seems like, oh, yeah, okay, I just did that problem. Move on to the next one. No, you didn't. All you did was rearrange this problem so that you could find the slope. And now that you have the slope, you need to go find the y-intercept, or the whole equation, the whole equation of the line. So over here, we now have slope. Don't need the b. We just want to make sure that it's a different b, different y-intercept. Here's x1 and y1. We take y minus 5 equals 3 times x minus 1. Distribute and add, again, y minus 5 equals 3x minus 3. And when you add 5 to both sides, your final answer now is y equals 3x plus 2. So this line must be parallel to this line over here, but also passes through the point 1, 5. 3 times 1 plus 2 equals 5. That's a parallel version of that problem. I'm going to give you a perpendicular version of that problem. But since we just did two parallels, a perpendicular, and rearranging equation, I'm going to let you do this one on your own and then check it. So go ahead and pause the tape, solve it, and see how you do. Try not to look back. You're testing yourself to see if you understand this. Okay, you're back. Hopefully you rearrange the equation properly, subtracting the 6x, dividing by 3 all three times, finding a slope of negative 2. But because it's perpendicular, you need to turn your slope into 1 half instead of negative 2. Now go ahead and do the formula. y minus 9 equals half of x minus negative 2, which became a plus. Distribute, add, and your final answer if you did it right, was y equals 1 half x plus 10. And lastly, a little bit of a word problem. When are we ever going to use this in real life? <coughs> That's when we're going to use this in real life, maybe, if you're going to join a climbing gym. But the idea is that slope and lines and intercepts aren't just there to represent a line on a graph. They always represent any relationship that's linear that as x goes up so does y go up or one goes up one goes down. The equation y equals 50x plus 125 models the total cost of joining a climbing gym and now it's asking what are the meaning of the slope and the y-intercept of the line. You don't want to say the slope means rise over run and the y-intercept means the starting point on the graph or the base or where it crosses the y-axis. That's what all slopes and y-intercepts mean. It's saying specifically in this problem, what do those mean? And we see here the y-intercept, I'll start with that. If you know anything about joining a gym, joining a climbing gym, becoming a member of any of that stuff, there's always a deposit. Like what's the fee? What do you have to pay to get in? So the $125, we'll say for our y-intercept, is $125 and you could say that whether you want to call it a fee, um, initial fee is a good idea to call it. Like just for joining, you have to pay this. Or even some people, deposit probably isn't the right word because if you say deposit, that probably means uh, when you leave, you get your money back at some point. No, it's not really a deposit. You just pay that right up front. If you never go to the gym again, you still lose your 125. The slope is 50. The slope is $50, and it says the total cost of joining a climbing gym. It doesn't really say, like, how much this is, but, again, try to use a little bit of common sense. It probably costs more than $50 a year, but not as much as $50 a week would be unrealistic, and maybe this should have been more specific, but it's $50 per 
and it's kind of a fill in the blank, but it's gonna you're gonna have to pay fifty dollars every single time this happens. So realistically, we're gonna say per month. But basically, because it's a slope, you're just basically saying it's changing every time. So if you had one month, it would be fifty dollars. If you're there two months, it'd be a hundred. Three months would be 150. On a graph, that would look like over one, up 50. Over two, up 100. Over three, up 150. With an initial fee of $125. So start at 125, it'd go up 50, up another 50, up another 50, which is a nice linear graph. So what does it mean? The y-intercept is your base. It's your starting fee, your slope. You're paying $50 every month to join this gym. And that's what you're going to be asked in some real life problems. So uh, keep track of parallel versus perpendicular. They both start with P, but they're very opposite. And be very careful of turning your slope into opposite reciprocals. Otherwise, good luck on your assignment and understanding this concept. Bye.